And Republican Congressman Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise have both announced that they will run and are running for the job of House Speaker. Joining me right now is Kentucky Congressman Andy Barr. He's a member of the Financial Services, China Select, and Foreign Affairs Committees. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Good to see you. Who do you support good for Speaker? Good to see you. Thank you. Who are you supporting for Speaker? I support Steve Scalise for speaker. I spoke with uh, Jim Jordan last night, and I have tremendous respect for Jim. He's doing a great job as chairman of the Judiciary Committee, focusing on oversight of the Biden administration's weaponization of government. But uh, we need, as, 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 as we can all see, we need a unity right now. We need someone who is a uniter, and Steve Scalise is the uniter uh, in our conference right now, someone who has a proven record of bringing uh, our conference together. Uh, he, he, is a, he is a trusted conservative. Uh, as the majority whip, he was consistent in bringing together 218 vo votes. Uh, as our majority leader, he has transformed a conservative agenda into legislative action uh, through regular order with member input. Nobody knows every member of this conference better than Steve Scalise. Okay. And as I said before, last week was a very disappointing week for our conference. It's a critical moment in our in our uh, majority and we need someone who can unite the conference that's Steve Scalise in my judgment where do these investigations stand in terms of the investigation into the uh, weaponization of federal government in terms of uh, the investigation uh, into uh, the Biden family influence peddling and then of course you've got all of those bills to finish by November 17th what what is the odd uh, what are the odds that you can do that and not have the government shut down again on November 17th well, well, this is this is the problem. The problem with the, the the misguided tactics of a few members last week was that we can't act right now. We can't act on anything. We can't. <laughs> if if the goal was to reduce spending, we can't move conservative appropriations bills that cut spending. We can't continue the critical oversight of the Biden administration. We can't continue the investigation into the weaponization of government. We can't continue impeachment inquiries. We can't even move a border security bill. We had a handful of members last week vote against uh, a conservative bill that cuts non-defense discretionary spending by 30 percent and, and would have enacted the toughest border security measure in the history of the Congress. And we had so-called conservatives vote with Democrats against that bill. Right. Uh, so we need we need unity right now. The advantage that we have in the majority is to stick together. And um, tactics matter in a narrow majority. And joining with Democrats to vote against a conservative outcome is not uh, is not wise. In fact, it's totally foolish. We need a speaker who will unite this conference and get everybody on the sa same page. That's Steve Scalise. Okay, Congressman, I want to get your take on uh, the bill that you are pushing. Uh, your bill would require sanctions on Chinese military and surveillance companies to try and stop them from accessing global financing. The bill recently moved out of the Financial Services Committee with bipartisan support. This is an issue that we talk about on this program a lot. The fact that, you know, uh, many of these Chinese companies are embedded in ETFs and index funds, and, and, and investors in America buy those. And so what we have here is uh, individual investors and institutional investors uh, like uh, BlackRock are pretty much funding the expansion of our number one adversary. Tell us about your bill. Yeah, every day that we don't have a speaker, we can't deal with the major threat facing the United States, and that's the rise of the Chinese Communist Party and the fact that Americans are unwittingly financing uh, the Chinese military industrial complex. As you say, um, Americans uh, right now, they don't even know it, but they own about $1.2 trillion of Chinese debt and equity securities in their 401ks, in their 529 plans, in their IRAs. We need to stop that. And so my bill, the Chinese Military and Surveillance Company Sanctions Act, uh, will be part of the discussions in the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, and what it would do is it would unleash the powers of the Treasury Department and specifically the Office of Foreign Asset Control, which implements and enforces sanctions. It would authorize Treasury to sanction uh, these Chinese uh, companies that are on the, the military industrial complex list, the entity list at the Commerce Department, the Chinese military company list yeah. that the Department of Defense pub publishes, 
Americans should not be financing these Chinese companies that threaten our national security. And sanctions is the way to do it because it gives the private sector certainty. It's red light, green light. If, if, if they get sanctions, they, they cannot be in these index funds. Um, if it's green light, then it's okay. But we require in this bill Treasury to report to Congress every year why a company that's on one of these lists, why they would not get full blocking sanctions from our government. Well, by the way, is it the same for Russia? I mean, right now there are Russian companies embedded in index funds. They can continue to trade. How pathetic are the sanctions on Russia after the war in Ukraine? I mean, seriously, how pathetic are these sanctions if we still have Russian companies that are able to trade? Well, that's right. And there's a gaping loophole in our sanctions regime against Russian banks because there is a general license on the major source of financing of this, uh, this unprovoked ag aggression against right. Ukraine, and that is the energy sector. Uh, we have exempted the energy sector and energy transactions from our sanctions regime against against Russia. Also, yeah. we are not going after Chinese Chinese banks that are facilitating the material lethal support by the CCP of Russia right now. So, yeah, so it's all there's show. a lot of problems with the Biden administration's yeah, sanctions it, it, approach, and we want to change that. It's all a show, okay? We're not doing anything. We're not holding our adversaries to account, and that's why I keep asking if the reason is is that this guy is compromised in the White House. Is that what it is? Is. Todd, jump in here. My question is on your approach here. Will Wall Street lobbyists end up fighting you on this? Or do you think they're going to say, look, if the field is level and we all have to abide by these sanctions or what the impact of those sanctions could be on them, do you think they're going to embrace their patriotic duty? You know, I, I've, uh, as a member of the Financial Services Committee, I've had many conversations with Wall Street executives, CEOs of major banks and asset managers, and, and it, no, look, they, they push back a little bit on this. However, on the other hand, they do want a level playing field. They, they don't, they can't uh, get out of that market without a level playing field where their c competitors are in there. So we're going to provide that level playing field with my legislation, uh, and they will mm. do their patriotic duty, and OF OFAC is the tool to do it, yeah. because uh, that is is a, that is a strong and very targeted approach, uh, and uh, if, 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 a, if a business wants to access to the U.S. financial system, they cannot cross uh, OFAC sanctions. And, and one other point about my bill, the virtue of my bill, is it has a multilateral effect. We also need to send a signal to non-U.S. investors to stay away from China. And the way to do that is to give them a choice. You can either do business with this Chinese blacklisted company, or you can have access to the U.S. financial system and the U.S. dollar-denominated transactions. That is a powerful tool in our uh, arsenal, and we need to use it yeah. uh, to have a multilateral effect on, on China. Well, so far, the Biden administration has been unwilling willing to pull that, uh, pull that economic lever, because the capital markets in America are the deepest, the most liquid in the world. That is such an important, uh, uh, powerful tool, and they're not using it. Congressman, we're going to be watching your work, of course, and the speaker's race, so that you can get back to regular order. Andy Barr joining us this morning. Thank you, sir.